Hello and welcome to the second uh, and last presentation in, with respect to the principles of tomography and we're going to discuss PET and by PET I don't mean a puppy or a goldfish, we mean positron emission tomography and by positron this is, uh, this is the uh, this is, relates to the beta positive decay and if you don't know what the beta positive decay is make a point to get acquainted with it before you keep on going with this presentation because you need to know what beta positive decay is and what annihilation is. This was covered in previous videos and equipped with this information we can understand positron emission tomography. And on the right side we see an image brought to us by the Simmons Healthcare Worldwide. This is their website. They're a nice research company. And this is a very interesting well integrated PET machine that also does CT scans but it is a PET machine. And we can see a very very happy uh, happy person here maybe because she can actually afford a PET scan then she must be pretty happy. So what we are going to discuss the PET scan and also maybe why is it so expensive. <laughs> So a little bit about isotopes being that PET uses a positron emission, naturally it would be a using beta positive decaying isotopes, beta positive decaying isotopes. And I'm going to mention this again because I said I will. Whenever we're putting a radioactive substance in our body, we want it to have a short half-life, short half-life. And by short half-life, what I really mean is I don't want it to keep on decaying in my body for weeks and days and I'm going to walk around my street uh, or go to the university all emitting uh, gamma radiation. It's not, it's not such a nice thing to have. So we need beta positive decaying isotopes that have a short half-life. This is pretty much it and uh, basically I'm not going to give you all the different examples but I'm just going to give you two that you need to remember. The uh, fluorine 18 and the carbon 11 are both beta positive emitting isotopes and according to the Berkeley National Lab of the US Department of Energy the carbon has the carbon 11 has a half life of 20.3 minutes whereas the fluorine 18 has the uh, 109.70 oh something minutes of half life and you don't really need to know these data. You don't really need to know. But the idea is that it is a short half-life. It's not going to last for days and days and days. And when we use these isotopes in our bodies, we can get a nice reading and they are going to decay away and not take a long time to uh, take place. And soon we're going to discuss the mechanism. But as long as we're talking about these isotopes, well, let's talk about what they can they can, uh, they can help us image. First of all, and I'm going to repeat this again, I have my radioactive isotope because this is the, the basis for uh, imaging with radioactive uh, tracers. We have the radioactive isotope and we couple it, we couple it with a biologically relevant, biologically relevant molecule. And that molecule has a specific specific role to play in our body. It goes to specific areas, gets absorbed in specific regions. So we know where we can expect it to occur and we know what what we can check. And this when this is combined, this is called the radiopharmacon. Radiopharmacon. And this radiopharmacon is really what what, I'm, what I am injecting to my patient and this radiopharmacon is going to migrate and do a specific process in the body and while we're mentioning these process and you do need to know this we can use fluorine to measure uh, glucose metabolism using fluorodeoxyglucose FDG18 and you do need to know this because they did ask about it and we can use it to map glucose metabolism glucose metabolism Metabolism. And we can use carbon uh, integrated into the methionine molecule, methionine molecule to uh, look into um, protein synthesis, protein synthesis. Just to give you an idea, uh, in 2011 the second self-control test featured a question saying carbon-11 can be used to measure glucose metabolism. So they really went into the thick of things and they asked which of these actually measure which of these. <clears throat> these are the only two I would make a point to remember. 
What's also important to know, or maybe not important, but they make a point to uh, make sure we know that these isotopes are highly unstable, highly unstable, and thus we can't just we can't just keep them in our refrigerator. We need to specially made them. We need to specially prepare them, and they're prepared in cyclotrons. <clears throat> and what you can imagine, being that these have a short half-life, if they're prepared in cyclotrons, I need to really quickly get them to the imaging laboratory. So the imaging laboratory, or my my pet, my pet institute, is, my pet institute has to be with a close with vicinity to these cyclotrons. So now you you can pretty much see how this can can dramatically increase the resources and money we would need to undergo a PET scan. <clears throat> So these, these beta-positive decaying isotopes can be paired with their respective uh, biologically relevant molecule to form a radiopharmacon that checks specific interactions in our body. And thus, it is going to give us, and this is also important, PET is going to give us a functional, functional image. So it's going to be a functional imaging method. And the next video is going to be what's the difference between functional and anatomical. <clears throat> and we can keep on going because we discussed what isotopes we're using. We can discuss the mechanism. And the mechanism is actually, believe it or not, it is fairly simple. What it says is that I can use, and what happens in beta, uh, beta positive decay, if this is the nucleus, beta positive is ejected out. Now I have my beta positive. Obviously, this is not... This is not drawn to scale, but this beta positive particle is going to come with, uh, co come with contact with an electron and undergo annihilation. And I'm going to see two gamma photons uh, incident to one another, opposite to one another, emitted out. So let's just say, let's just say I have a body here, and this is a 2D cross section. So this is a 2D cross section. And my PET scan is pretty much somewhat of a spiral of scintillation detectors. It doesn't have a radiation source because the radiation source is inside the body. Radiation source is here. So all it has here is just a wide array of scintillation detectors with, uh, with photomultiplier tubes that can basically um, detect radiation. And let's just say my molecule is here and my molecule starts decaying and it emits different gamma gamma photons in, in every which way. And these gamma photons can actually be read and interpreted. And if we look into the location of detection versus the time of detection, I can say, oh, these, these two readings were read roughly at the same time, so they must have originated from the same source or from the same event. And maybe after I had an event that was here and here, then maybe these two guys originate from the same event as well because they're in the same time frame. And in that sense, I can do some sort of some sort of crisscrossing and get to the imaging or to the center of radiation. And that's basically the idea with PET. And I think I have I have some sort of image here. There you go. <coughs> this image was also from the Berkeley Institution. And this is ba basically a way of saying of of, of looking into this is the my beta positive decaying isotope and I can see the uh, the incident directions in which the gamma photons these gamma photons actually went and they were read here in these detectors and then we can take a cross section like these guys did here and we can get a nice reading as to where is that isotope decaying and what is its concentration so if you want to focus on the let's just say an essay an open essay question Worst case scenario about define the mechanism of a positron emission tomography where using beta positive uh, decaying isotopes paired to a biologically relevant molecules and that we inject, we inject into our patient. And then we take, and obviously these come from a cyclotron if you really, really want to show off and say that you remember where they come from. So we inject those to the patient. They have a short half-life short half-life. The patient is placed in a, in a PET scan or a PET machine and incident gamma photons, incident gamma photons from the beta positive decay I, are interpreted and are mapped into an image. And this image is a functional image. 
And if you want to see what a functional image versus anatomical, just take a look at the next video. So this is basically the mechanism, and it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to finish off with a little bit of a summary, and this is uh, just a picture taken from the Journal of Neurology and Neurosurgery and Psychiatry, and this is their address. And basically, this is F. This is FDG 18 mapping. So we can really see, and the different colors actually correspond to different concentrations. We obviously don't really read colors, we read photons, but different concentrations correlate with different colors here in this reading. So let's just take what's good, what's good about PET, uh, a PET scan. Well, it's, it's very sensitive. It's very sensitive and it's very specific because we can take a specific radiopharmacon and have it and have it emitting specifically in a in a given place. And under uh, unlike CT, where we need to radiate the body, the body itself is radiating out, and it is more specific and it is more accurate. So that's why it also has a high resolution for our a high resolution for our uh, functionality, the functionality that we're looking into. Here we can see the functionality of the kidneys that is being observed. And also you can, you can assume that being that we're using radiopharmacon, it is highly selective. We can target specific processes in the body. It is highly selective per radiopharmacon. Radiopharmacon. Perfect. And as you can imagine, the disadvantages, if you're, if you're asked to give, to give some disadvantages, the main one is that it requires a lot of money, a lot of money it has a high cost. <clears throat> it is also very time consuming because what you need to do is you need to go ahead to get to the cyclotron, prepare the beta positive emitting isotopes, and then you need to transport them to the institution. Sometimes they are flown uh, across bar borders in Europe because pet, pet scan institutions and cyclotrons are not across the street from, uh, from your neighborhood shop. And also you can assume that due to those factors, you have low accessibility. Low accessibility. Accessibility. And that's pretty much the entirety about PET, PET scan. Hopefully you found this helpful. And the next video is going to conclude the different imaging methods, anatomic versus uh, functional. See you then.